Yo. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to remove the background from an image. So first, let me drag and drop my image in Synfig. Then I'll scale it until I'm satisfied with the size. And move it down a bit. Then I'm going to select the spline tool and in the options panel, make sure that I only have the region layer option selected. So if any of the other options are selected, just deselect them. Okay, so what we want to do is use the spline tool to create a selection around the person in the image. So I'm going to zoom in so that I can have a better view. And I'm going to left click here and you can begin anywhere on the image it doesn't matter where you begin and I'm going to click here then add one here as you can see I'm not worried about adding points perfectly around the edges that's because after I make the selection then I'll go back and adjust the points around the edges so I'm just adding points and making my way around the image oh and I should mention that this image was purchased on Shutterstock so I can't share it, but for future videos, I'll make sure to use free images. But I'll provide an image that you'll be able to use in the description below. So we continue to add our points. And to close the selection, simply right click the first point and select loop spline. And we've made our selection around the image. Now it's time to adjust the points to match up around this lady right here. So if I left click any of the points and drag outwards and just move my mouse, we can create a curve. I'm going to add a point right here by right clicking and select insert vertex and I'm going to left click and drag the point here and I'm going to go to this point and adjust it a bit now something to note is that when I left click and drag any of the orange points notice that we get two additional control points which appear yellow when that happens, if you click on the orange point again, you are able to move it freely. And the yellow control points now take on the role of creating the curves. So I'm just going around adjusting the points. Just remember that when you first click on a point, you pull outward to get the yellow control points. Alright, let me zoom in a bit more and adjust this. And click this one, drag outwards. Okay, so notice here, if I drag this point right here, it affects the other point. So what we can do is make one of these points independent. If I right click this point and select split tangents, we can now move this point freely without affecting the other point. So let me adjust this. And that's pretty much what I'll do for the rest of the image. But I'm not going to speed this section up, just in case you are somewhat lost, you can continue to observe what I'm doing. So yep, left click, drag, then adjust.
I'm going to right click here, select split tangents and adjust. One other thing to note is that you should not press undo while you're doing this. Undo has no effect on the spline tool until you select another tool. So if you mess up, simply delete points or adjust them as necessary, but do not undo. Okay, so I'm not looking to make this super perfect. Let me zoom out and have a look. I think I'm okay with what we have here. The next thing to do is select the transform tool. And when we do that, the selected area is now filled with white. This white comes from the color that I currently have selected. So if I click the spline layer, we see here and you can change it if you want. The next thing to do is change the blend method. So if I click here, you might have to click twice and scroll down and select alpha over. That area of our selection is now gone. But if I go to invert and left click in this area to turn it on, our image is now back and the background is now gone. The background is technically still there, just hidden, which makes our workflow non-destructive, which is always good. I'm going to group these two layers. So select any one of the layers, then hold down the shift key and left click the other layer to select them. Then go to the folder icon here and left click to group the layers. And I'm going to rename this to Singer to stay organized. Now, any action that we perform, we do it to the folder without directly altering the image. So we now have control points here and we can move the image and perform other actions as well. We can add a background and I'm going to add a gradient using the gradient tool. It's above the image. So with the gradient layer selected, click this arrow right here to move it below the image. And I'm going to change the colors from black and white. So in the properties panel, I'm going to click on the gradient HSV and I'm going to select a color that looks appealing to me or that matches well with the, Im with the image. I'm going to click over here and change this black into maybe a dark purple. and click close. Notice that that's a harsh line where the two colors meet. I don't want that, so one way to fix this is by adding a blur. So right click the gradient layer, then go to new layer, blur, and I'll choose blur. With that added, we can see that there's a control point that can be used to alter the blur. So if I left click and drag to the right, we see that the colors are being blended much better than they were before and I am satisfied with this. Now let's stay organized. So I'm going to select the blur and gradient layer and add them to a group. And I'm going to call this BG for background and that's it for this one. So see you in the next video. Yo.